Hi, my name is John Elliott. I'm a PhD student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and today I'm going to be talking about associated motion in Entatsur, which is a language of the Paraguay and Chaco. Uh, I'll start by talking a little bit about uh, associated motion um, and give you a little bit of background on Entatsur before talking uh, more in depth about uh, the typological characteristics of associated motion in this language. All right, so we'll start by talking a little bit about uh, associated motion. Um, associated motion we can define as a verbal grammatical category separate from tense, aspect, mood, uh, and direction, whose function is to associate in different ways, uh, different kinds of translational motion, which just means changing your location, uh, to some kind of verb event, usually one that doesn't already have motion semantics. Uh, so in kind of a prototypical example of this, you have uh, the associated motion system in Cavinenia, which is a Takana language in the Bolivian Amazon, uh, where if you have a verb root like ba, you can add associated motion morphology to get uh, verb stems like ba ti, which means to go and see something, or uh, ba na come and see something. And these systems can get quite complex, right? So you can have something like ba tsa, which means to see something while that something is approaching uh, you. Um, what's important here to note is that this is uh, associated motion is distinct from directionals uh, because here where we could imagine a directional morphology that might distinguish between like look up, look down, look out, uh, here you're actually just adding an entire separate motion event to the main verb event. Uh, and that's a critical difference between associated motion and directionals. So when it comes to describing uh, the associated motion system in a language, if we think that's what uh, a language has, there's a number of different typological parameters that have already been uh, worked out in the literature. Um, one of the, the kind of macro parameters, if we're talking about the morphological structure of associated motion, is whether or not the associated motion morphology is dedicated or non-dedicated. Um, dedicated it pretty simply means that the associated motion morphology is used exclusively for that purpose, um, usually in some kind of well-elaborated morphological paradigm. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the language has like a ton of different uh, uh, associated motion morphemes, right? Um, like the system that I showed you, San Diego Cavinenia, is, an is a dedicated associated motion system with a lot of different contrasts. Some languages have up to like 15 different kinds of associated motion events, um, but lots of languages have just one or two, uh, especially in West Africa. Um, and we can contrast a dedicated associated motion system uh, with a non-dedicated system, meaning that the morphology that sometimes gives you associated motion semantics does not always give you that uh, that meaning. Uh, beyond the dedicated, non-dedicated contrast, there's a lot of different semantic values that we might want to know about in an associated motion system. So for example, uh, argument role. Which argument is the moving figure? Is it the subject that's moving? Is it the object that's moving? Um, we want to know about temporal relations. So you have an event, uh, how does it, uh, an associated motion event, how does it correspond temporally uh, to the main event? Does it happen before, during, after? Um, does that associated motion event have a particular spectral realization? Does it come to an end? Is it kind of ongoing? Um, and then does the associated motion system encode different kinds of path of motion? So is it like away from versus towards? You know, what, what is there in the system? All right, so uh, Inflet Sur is an indigenous language of the Paraguayan Chaco in the Department of Presidente Hayes. Uh, it's one of the six languages of the Inflet, in Inflet family, uh, formerly known as the Mesquite family. Uh, it's an ethnic population of about 7,500, and about 4,000 of those folks speak in Flitsur. Um, so it is uh, certainly a, a threatened language, and it's losing speakers, but it's not highly endangered at the moment. There's still, um, in many communities, uh, lots of children that grow up speaking it as a first language. Um, typologically, it's a, it's a predicate initial language, uh, strongly head marking. Um, this is a, a map of Presidente Hayes and where the uh, majority of Flitsur communities are um, in Presidente Hayes in the Chaco. Um, and just uh, so you guys know, uh, the data that I'm presenting here comes from a number of different sources. Uh, the primary one is my own um, fieldwork, um, uh, a language documentation project with uh, mostly video um, archived in ELAR. Um, but I also uh, get a lot of uh, data from an Inflexor sort of Dictionary project, um, as well as various extant texts and uh, previous um, descriptions, usually small sketch grammars of the language. Okay, so before we get to like the, the real uh, meat of the presentation about associative motion, 
Uh, you kind of need to understand the basis of the associated motion system in Tlesur through uh, what I call the directional morphology, um, which is also kind of directional aspectual morphology. So you have three uh, verbal suffixes in Tlesur um, that can provide path semantics to motion verbs, um, but two of them, when you use them with non-motion verbs, also have a, a, a kind of a spectral value. Um, and more generally speaking, the directional semantics can kind of be derived from the aspectual ones, right? The relationship between the aspectual values and the directional values are pretty clear. Um, so for example, what I call the duplicative, um, when you have it on a non-motion event, it generally just means to do something again. So like in two here, you have um, one me, which is be silent. You add the duplicative and you have uh, they became silent again, like they calmed back down. Um, but if you add it to a motion verb, like head to or go, one of these verbs, simple motion verbs, um, you get uh, kind of returning back somewhere else, right? Usually not in the here, but usually kind of tactically away. Um, and this is, the relationship there is pretty clear, right? Do something again, go somewhere again. Right. Um, the syslocative uh, is strictly a directional marker um, in that it marks uh, motion. It, it, it gives a, a path of motion that brings you to the speaker or the didactic here, um, which might not necessarily be the speaker if you're telling a story. Um, so like in four, they bring the snails here uh, to the edge of the lake or in five, one day the bishop came to us. Right. So. Um, the syslocative is used in come to us, um, even though it's not necessarily in the like spatial here, but the us is clearly kind of the didactic center of the story. Um, and finally, you have what I call the terminative, um, which if you add it to a non-motion verb, um, it kind of gives you the, the semantics of achievement. So like in six, you have a, a verb base, yishwas, which means to be read. And if you add the terminative, yishwasakmik, um, that means to become red, right? Uh, which is the verb that's used for the um, sunrise. Um, whereas if you add it to something that, uh, some verb that has motion semantics, like here in seven, uh, you have carry, which, which is a motion verb, it means not just to hold something, but to take something somewhere. Um, when you add it to that motion uh, verb, it means to carry, it, it means to take something uh, to some uh, final location, right? And again, it, it means like away from the speaker, right? Over there, it has a, a... Okay, so we have this directional morphology that adds path semantics to motion events, but also is kind of a spectral. Um, but the basis for true associated motion morphology in Entlesur um, starts with a, a basic verb root, wa, which means to arrive. Um, what is a fully regular, normal verb root uh, in this language. Uh, it's very pretty high frequency. Um, it has a kind of punctual telic or achievement uh, a spectral semantics. So it means to arrive, to get there. There's like an end point to the motion event. So like an eight, we say wakastanata, that means a bird arrived. Um, now, what you do with that wa in inflet and other related languages in the family um, is you take that same wa and you kind of just stick it on to the right edge of the verb base of any other verb um, and you get an associated motion event, um, which is kind of like verb incorporation in the sense that wa is morpho the, the associated motion wa is uh, morphophonologically just like it's strictly verb root counterpart. It's really no different um, in any way formally, um, except that it just gets smacked right onto uh, another another verb root. Um, so like in nine, you have um, a primary verb, pa wang, and then you add this what right on the right edge of it, uh, and you get uh, it came and spoke at his house, right? So this is the associated motion. There's a primary uh, verb event to speak and an associated motion arrive. Um, now that's the basis of the system. And then onto that associated motion, what you can then add any of those other three directionals uh, that I was talking about just, just a second ago. Um, and what you end up with is this kind of nice, neat two by two paradigm, um, that contrasts, um, associated motion, uh, arriving in the dectic here versus the dectic there. And, uh, doing so for the first time or doing so uh, like returning. So if you have just the, the, that what 
added onto a verb by itself. It means to do something upon arriving here for the first time. Um, if you have that what plus the terminative, it means to do something upon arriving there for the first time. Uh, if you uh, have it with the syslocative, it means to do something upon returning here. And remember that that syslocative morphing by itself um, does not necessarily mean return. It just means do something towards here. Um, and then with the duplicative, uh, you have to do something upon returning out back there, right? Um, and so what that means is that in the presence of the associative motion wa, um, these directional markers can no longer be interpreted uh, with their aspectual values relative to uh, the main verb event. They can only be interpreted as providing path semantics to the associated motion event. So no matter what uh, they, they could potentially add to the main primary verb, um, that's completely overridden and they have to be interpreted as contributing to the associated motion event. Um, so to summarize, um, go back to those typological parameters I talked about a few minutes ago. Um, if we look at the semantic parameters, uh, um, associated motion in the sort can only, or at least with what, can only express prior motion. Uh, and that motion is especially telic, punctual. Um, as far as the path semantics that are uh, available to the system, uh, they're strictly like goal destination centered. So they're only about uh, where you are arriving to. Um, we can't really give you any kind of semantics about arriving from somewhere or leaving or going away from a place. Um, and interestingly, uh, the, the, the distinctions made in path are based on a here, there um, versus first time versus return opposition. Um, which, as far as I know, is not attested in the literature that you have an associated motion system that distinguishes between um, an event that is happening for the first time versus an event that is happening um, upon a return associated motion uh, event. Um, now, structurally, uh, in regards to this question about whether or not this is dedicated or non-dedicated associated motion, well, it's, it's not like super clear cut to me um, because all of the pieces in the system that uh, what is just a verb root, <laughs> um, but it's it's used in kind of an, an unusual way. Um, there's not any other kind of verb incorporation in the language um, whatsoever. And so the way that this what is used is very unique. Um, but, you know, it had just has the basic meanings of the, of the verb root by itself um, and it has the same kind of morphophonological properties. Um, and then also, again, those directional markers um, what they do in the associative motion context is a little bit different than what they are doing and what they mean um, by themselves without an associated motion event. Um, so at the end of the day, it's kind of in a middle ground between dedicated and non-dedicated because um, although all the pieces kind of come from somewhere else, within the context of the associative motion events, they're uh, semantically different enough that we might think about them as distinct uh uh, grammaticalizations of those pieces. Now, one of the other semantic parameters I pointed out at the beginning was the relationship between uh, the argument structure of the primary verb event and the associated motion event, um, and which kind of possibilities are available in a given language. Um, the typological literature generally focuses on whether or not the moving figure, or M, is the subject or the object of the primary verb event. Um, Whereas the, the reality, at least in the sort, is really more complex. Um, since verbs can have other animate argument roles, first of all, like a goal argument, um, and also associated motion events kind of have two semantic arguments, right? They can have not only the moving figure, but also can kind of have an applicative uh, where they're adding a destination uh, argument to that uh, associated motion event. Um, so most of the time, and I've never quantified this, but uh, in, you know, the vast majority of cases, um, the subject of the verb is also the moving figure of the associated motion event. So like in 12 here, where you have your father came here to wait for you, right? So your father is the one doing um, the waiting and he's also the one doing the coming. Um, but the thing is, is that the moving figure can be really any argument and the distinction between different moving arguments um, and their argument and their their argument role in the main verb uh, is not 
marked in any way, really, uh, in the morphology of the language. So like in 13, I found work for him when he got here. Um, the, the subject of the main verb is I, and then the moving figure is him, um, who is in the main verb a benefactor. <laughs> um, but this isn't marked any differently. The associated motion uh, morphology doesn't really uh, recognize this difference in the argument structure of the associated motion event relative to the primary verb event. Um, so I'll note here, uh, if you're paying close attention, um, the arrive set here has an S instead of what, um, but that's just a, a, a regular phonological rule um, in Sur. So there's no difference between the, in, in the, the uh, morphological indexing of uh, who the moving figure is relative to um, the primary verb. Um, and even more than that, uh, it doesn't really have to necessarily be like, an, the movie figure doesn't really have to necessarily be a real argument of the main verb, like at all. So in 14, you have Pedro made me happy when I got back home, right? Um, but literally in Inflet, uh, what you would say is, um, Pedro um, made my soul, my innermost spread out. Right, so I pick this up. Pick Iwasok is my innermost, my soul, um, and so the uh, moving figure is only the possessor of the object of the primary verbal argument structure. Um, or sometimes you have in like fifteen, um, you have a primary verb event, um, uh, something like that, um, which is a completely like. Uh, monovalent verb. It means for the north wind to blow. It's, it's, it's a weather verb. It doesn't really have like a real subject. Um, so there's no sense in which this could have more than one argument normally. Um, but when you add this associated motion, what here, um, you get uh, a moving figure that is really not part of the argument structure of the main verb whatsoever. So you will arrive, moving figure you, um, with the wind blowing uh, against you. So there can be cases like this where there's really no relationship between the argument structure of the associated motion event and the primary verb event, uh, like, at all. So a final note is is that uh, the associated motion morphology in Inflet sort of seems to have the ability to um, kind of have this applicative effect in adding uh, a, a destination or a goal argument of the associated motion uh, event. Um, so, for example, in 16, where you have a, a completely monovalent uh, verb, like the yang fall, um, when you have associated motion with it, you can say something like, it fell on me, and you can mark the me here uh, in the pronominal prefix slot on the verb, um, that e, eh, um, which kind of shows you that it, it's kind of like a core argument in some sense of the verb at this point. Um, or in 17, you have another completely monovalent verb, uh, which means to dawn, um, it never really even, <laughs> it's kind of like a weather verb, it doesn't really even take a, one argument normally, let alone two. Um, but if you have an associated motion of uh, morphology here, um, you have uh, the ability to dawn on somebody, right? Um, so like here, a drunk, <laughs> a drunk guy was sleeping in the road until dawn, literally at dawn, kind of like arriving to this drunk guy um, in the middle of the road. Um, so in both these cases, you have a, have a completely monovalent verb, and the associative motion allows you to add this new uh, argument that is the kind of like um, destination of this arriving event. So in conclusion, uh, Enthelstuer has a relatively small uh, associative motion inventory. There's not like a, a huge number of different distinctions that are available. Um, and it's kind of pulled together from different parts of the rural morphology. Um, it's not completely dedicated. Um, it does have one unusual semantic parameter, this first time versus return um, uh, opposition. Um, that's likely related to the fact that uh, the morphemes used are kind of originally have uh, sort of aspectual values to them. The directional markers have some aspectual semantics associated with them. Um, there's a lot of questions remaining about the formal realization of um, the relationships of uh, associated motion to the argument structure of the verb in this language. Um, and so I gave you some examples of, of where the moving figure is not the subject, but we don't really know a lot about, uh, we don't really know a lot yet about when that can happen and what the restrictions are on it. Because um, again, it's not really marked, um, and it's not particularly common either, um, but it does happen.
Um, and finally, you have this applicative effect of adding this like destination argument um, that differs from the kind of simple path semantics that we usually associate with associative motion or even just directional morphology in general. Um, that is not really typical of, of dedicated associated motion cross linguistically, as far as I'm aware. Um, so there's a lot of interesting stuff to look at here, um, and I would hope that in the future um, we can do some more study on uh, the use of associative motion kind of in discourse um, to see uh, kind of understand better about like how it's used um, and when you get to take advantage of some of these um, kind of unusual effects of the system in this language.